This was looking lifeless and bland. So I made some changes and I think it looks a lot better. Let me show you how I got to this point. If you haven't watched my first devlog, I'll catch you up real quick. This is my game, Please Feed the Fish, an evolution and ecosystem simulation game where you discover new varieties of fish by feeding them different foods. Manage populations of fish across six different biomes and discover new and interesting fish, each with their own personalities and feeding habits. The game is currently in development. And my goal is for it to be published on Steam by the end of the year. So if I'm going to simulate a living ecosystem, it needs to feel alive. Let me show you where I started. My starting point was this basic pond shape using Unity's terrain tool. I knew I wanted an enclosed feeling for this first area so the fish would stay in view, but with a sense of depth in the background. With some hills in the distance and fog applied to the scene, that depth was starting to be realized. Shallow ponds like this generally have tons of plants growing in them. This is a pond in my backyard that's only a few feet deep. There aren't any fish in it, just frogs and salamanders. The occasional duck will come and visit if there's enough water. But as you can see, it's filled with plants. So I needed some plants. I modeled my first simple one, a tiny clover-like plant that would grow all over and be the most abundant. Small ponds are generally stagnant. The water doesn't move very much. But the plants needed to give a sense that they were underwater. So I gave them a waving animation. This took some time to get right. At first, it was too fast, and all of the plants were synchronized. I watched it for a few minutes and I started to feel motion sick. Definitely not something I want my players to feel. But I realized it felt like being on a boat in the ocean. The plants were moving as if being pushed back and forth by waves. So I'm keeping this in mind for the ocean level. To make these plants look more like they were in a pond, I first gave them a random rotation and a random starting point for the animation. Then I slowed it down by a quarter. This was feeling much better. It wasn't so dizzying and actually felt relaxing. I had wanted an easy way to test out larger plants, so out of laziness, I stretched my tiny plant to make a sort of reed in the background. It had the right feel. This was where my pond was for the last devlog, and it was kind of painful for me to show because I knew it needed to be worked on. An iconic pond plant is the lily pad. My pond isn't deep enough for lily pads, sadly, but my simulated pond, of course, is. So I modeled the lily pad and gave it a gentle waving animation. Similar to the tiny plants, I randomized their rotation and animation and slowed it way down until it matched the other plants. At full speed, they look like they're dancing, which could work for a completely different game. With all of this detail being added, the pond bed was looking rather bland. I realized rocks would be perfect. They would add some character to the pond and balance it out visually. I modeled a basic rock shape and first strategically placed a few in places that I felt balanced the scene. Some larger rocks. Then I used Unity's terrain to scatter a bunch of smaller ones on the bottom. I forgot to fix them rotating randomly, but I actually like the rough edges on the rocks here and there. Two plants are good, but I knew I needed at least three. Looking at my pond again, it's obvious that grass, or grass-like plants, are one of the most common plants growing in ponds. So I modeled a single blade and created some tufts of grass within Unity. I gave the blades a similar flowing animation and spread them throughout the scene, filling in some gaps in the background and putting them in some interesting places in the foreground. The scene was looking much better, but something that had been bugging me was the color. Ponds are usually a murky brown or green, but blue was much more pleasing to look at. But the fog was creating a washed out look to everything in the scene. The fish blended in with the background. I like the fog and it adds a lot to the scene, so I took another stab at the color. After some experimenting, 
by simply darkening the blue. It took away some of that overpowering blue and simply darkened the rest of the colors. There's still a blue hue, but it's not quite as strong and the colors stand out much better. Lastly, there were a few finishing details I wanted to add. Floaties. As I said, ponds are very murky. The water is rarely clear in a small pond. So I thought floaties would be a good way to show that murky quality without actually creating a murky looking scene. So using Unity's particle system, I created some green floaties that floated gently around the pond. They fade in and out like dust particles, reflecting the light as they turn. While I was in particle mode, I also added another system that created bubbles here and there, being released from the mud and rising quickly to the surface. With all of that together, the pond is looking much more alive. Let me know what you think, and if there's anything else I could improve. I know that the fish are the focal point of the game, and you may have been hoping to see more of them, but background environment was the thing that really needed to improve visually for me, and I'm quite happy with it. In the next devlog, I'll introduce you to all of the fish that live in the pond right now. Here are the four varieties so far. Let me know in the comments what type of fish you think they are. I'll let it be a test of my modeling skills and art style. If no one can guess, then I probably have some work to do. I mentioned this in the last video, but the minnow is the starting fish, the smallest of the four. And it evolves into one of the other three. If you can't tell by looking at them, which I hope you can, I would look at the family of fish called Astariophysi for some clues. I'll tell you a bit more about it in my next devlog. If you haven't watched my first devlog or if you're watching from the future, here's a link uh, to my playlist of all of my devlogs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next devlog.